Hello, Sean Kavanagh from Aussie Target here with a quick video discussing importing Winson data into Aussie Target. Now, a few things before we get started. Uh, you need to have a look at your uh, settings in the Winson tool. Make sure that you've got your altitude unit set, your speed unit set, um, this output directory here set, and finally check Windwatch output for uh, for doing these conversions on your readings. So once you've got this all set up in the Winson tool, you're ready to go and do a reading. If you're practicing with this, uh, you can get it to generate the output files on replay. So you can load a sample file and generate these files once you've got it all set up. So that's the first part of it in the Winson software. The second thing you need to do is in this output for directory uh, or folder, you need to generate a text file called wind w underscore init dot dat and it's got three lines in it <clears throat> these three lines tell it or tell the winson software how to generate the wind watch file so the first line where it says 50 here is the first the altitude of the first reading in whatever units you've got set in the wind son so we've got feet feet so first reading will be at 50 feet Second line is the interval for the reading, so every 50 feet it will give you the data. And the final uh, number there, the number one, uh, represents the file format that it will generate. And one is uh, a tab separated human readable text file, and uh, a zero would be a CSV file, so comma separated. So once you've got that saved in the output directory, fire up your WinSond and do a reading. Uh, or load a sample one and replay it and it will generate this windwatch.dat file for your wind reading and uh, and that's great because obviously you can you know text that to people email it whatever else you want to however else you want to manage it uh, get it onto the onto the flight computers and it's now ready to either be looked at or imported straight into Aussie target so we open up Aussie Target and we go Tools, Wind Reader Import. It does a couple of things. It opens up the Wind Reader tool first of all, so you can select which reading you want to put this into, and opens up the Windwatch Import tool. Open the folder, select Windwatch.dat from wherever you've saved it, and it straight away brings all that data in. So if we were to compare them to the text file, we've got 50 feet, half a knot, and 158 degrees, so 50 feet, half a knot, 158.8 degrees. Um, things to be aware of, the wind sound is in true and two, uh, or track, so in your settings here, make sure that you put that to true and two, and, uh, and then you're ready to start select wind readings and drawing them in Aussie Explorer. Uh, a couple of things that you can do with this is if you go to settings you can actually convert the units so the wind sond at least the software we've got only gives you the option of meters per second or knots for speed so obviously in competitions we want kilometers per hour so you go speed from knots to kilometers per hour the direction it doesn't do any conversion at the moment um, i'm still reconciling how magnetic variation is dealt with across all these tools um, uh, the safest thing at the moment is to to make people set their own settings because automatic conversions of magnet to true can get really messy if you have the wrong value in the wrong in the wrong place so uh, so for the moment you just have to leave that and uh, and trust that the wind sound is true and make sure that you set true over here in your uh, uh, precision here you can round these numbers to a perfectly round number and the final thing is you can set your heights from AGL to AMSL so the wind sound tells you the altitude that the reading was taken at so if you put the 262 feet in there we'll leave that on one decimal place for the moment so we're going to convert to kilometers per hour leave the precision as it is and convert the AGL to AMSL refresh button and now everything's updated. We've got speed in kilometers per hour. Uh, we need to make sure that goes back to true. And uh, 
and all that's good. If we change our precision to zero and refresh, you can see it uh, it rounds everything up or down as as needed. So that's it. That's the the basics uh, to get you started. And uh, once you've done that, you can just close that down. Once you've done it once, uh, it remembers where it last got the file from. So if you keep copying new files to the same place, you can just hit that re pardon me, the refresh button and it will update that data. Uh, likewise, if you, uh, if you want to put wind readings into a different uh, wind reading uh, here, you just select the separate one and uh, hit refresh. And now you've got, well, these are the same reading, but if that data file had been updated, you'd have reading one, reading two, just by hitting the refresh button. So that's it. That's uh, importing wind reading data from a wind song.